Statues of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear. Judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, yet and much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey. Holy Spirit,
in response to COVID-19. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. You clothe us in our rightful mind. In purer lives, thy service find. In deeper reverence, praise. Sovereign Lord and Father, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, we bring before you the current challenges of the coronavirus across the world, in our Caribbean lands, and in our nation. You are here with us through your Son, Jesus Christ, who continually defeats the designs of the devil, and by the moving of the Holy Spirit, allows us to do likewise. Help us to be free from fear, even though the earth be moved and the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea and the mountains tremble at its tumult, remind us, O oh God, that you are in the midst. Dear Father, direct the minds of our doctors and nurses and caregivers, the health authorities and government authorities who make decisions on our behalf. Inspire and move us, O oh God, the full trust in you by our obedience, prayers, compliance with good hygienic practice, and our care for ourselves and each other. Give healing to those who are ill, grant special protection to those who are vulnerable, enable those researching medical treatment, strengthen and support the medical workers, and prevent us from unbelief. We look to you, Heavenly Father, for healing, guidance, and consolation. We place our lives and times in your hands as we respond in faith, wisdom, and hope through your Son, Jesus Christ, to bring an end to this crisis. By your divine favor, let us not leave for you what we can do for ourselves. By your divine wisdom, lead us to resolution of our economic, social, and emotional challenges as individuals, families, nations, and as one world. Make us ever mindful of your purpose and control. Through him, whoever intercedes for us, our advocate and friend, Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thy 
foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, he will never know.
Family in Christ, a pleasant morning to each and every one. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I welcome the body of Christ to the parish of St. Stephen's St. Stephen's Anglican Church. As we come to worship, okay, in order name by the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus down Christ. Below, and I just want to thank God for bringing each and every one of us here this morning. As we glorify 
his holy name. Allow me at this point, allow me at this point in time to indicate to you our safety and health instructions which are in place. There has been a change in the, in the safety and health instructions and we are guided by the diocesan policy. And I just want to mention a few. And uh, even though we receive this information, we still need to exercise extreme caution because COVID is still with us. Make no mistakes about it. And we still need to act responsibly and be our brothers and sisters keeper. So the instructions that came from the diocesan policy under the Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago. Churches now operate at 100% capacity. So this includes our church. And physical or social distancing on a phase basis at our facilities. We must continue to wear our mask at all times. This has to remain in force, whilst on the compound and whilst during the service. Some people tend to use a face shield, but your mask must also be worn under the face shield. We continue to do our temperature screenings, and this is just for the safety and well-being and the peace of mind for each and every one. And as we come in, our attendance registration will continue. And so we must have the list of worshipers in attendance, and this is necessary for contact tracing. The previous distancing was six feet apart, safe distance. Now it has been adjusted to three feet apart. But families who dwell in the same environment may sit together. As we continue our readings, the lectors, that is those who read the lessons, you know, they are to wear their masks, you know, whilst reading the lessons and we continue with sanitizing our microphones, etc. One thing I would like to point out is when we are coming up for communion, kindly keep your mask on until having received your communion. When you turn away from the priest, then you slip it off your hair one side and you take your communion. And the safety and well-being of all. You know, so I trust that, you know, we understand instructions, they are not new ones, but just adjustments. And we pray that we will have a spirit filled and a safe service, continue to be guided by the Holy Spirit and our priest in charge, Reverend Father Michael Greenwich. So thank you for your cooperation. You have a safe and Grateful service. Thank you. And what I forgot to mention, the men ministry is celebrating their corporate today. Amen. So we keep the men prayer.
شعبی هستن Good morning, Saints. Today is Sunday, the 20th of March, 2022. It is the third Sunday in Lent. We are observing all the readings for year C. We pray that our act of worship this morning draws you closer to the foot of the cross. And I ask God to hasten the footsteps of all those who are on their way. During our service today, we would like to remember Melvin Thomas, and Eva Johnson. They have both passed away during this week. They are part of our church and we need to keep the families in our prayer. At this time, we will now continue our service with our intro at him. CPWI 110. Turn with me in your Box of Common Prayer to page 9-8. Page 9-8, and we are beginning with our Lenten sentence. Be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Page 101. One zero one. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we confess in our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Palette of purity, 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Help us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversaries which may happen to the body and from all evil through which to which may assault and hurt the soul through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen please be seated for the ministry of the word today the ministry of the word comes from Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 15, followed by Psalm 63, 1 to 8, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 13, and the gospel today is taken from Luke chapter 13, verse 1 to 9. At this time, Brother Patrick Webb will now read in your hearing Exodus chapter 3, 1 to 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. Out of a bush, he looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to a country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, 
the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thank you be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 63, verse 1 to 9, and I would read in your hearing Psalm 63, verses, sorry, 1 to 8. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. From your loving kindness, for your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watch, for you have been my helper and under the shadows of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 13. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. 
Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a city. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happen to them to serve as an example, as they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. He will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Shall we all stand for our sequence him? Sequence him. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners 
than all others in Galilee? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed at the tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse sinners than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruits on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I found none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Beloved, the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Master of the Universe, we invite your presence here with us at this time. Send your angels with their vows of blessing to pour out your blessings upon each person within the hearing of my voice. And those who are viewing online, bless them. Heavenly Father, open our hearts and minds to your word and let your will be done. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Please be seated. In our gospel reading this morning, in the first paragraph, we heard a word being repeated over and over again. But unless you repent, then it goes on, unless you repent, and even a third time, unless you repent. And whenever we have a passage that where one word is repeated over and over, we must take note of that word. And this morning, that word is repent. And repentance is part of our worship during the Lenten season where we repent for our sins and we ask God to give us spiritual guidance. But first of all, what does repentance or to repent really mean? What does it mean to repent? What should I do whenever I read this word? How should I understand this word and inwardly digest it to make it part of my life and to make it a part of my Lenten experience, the word repent. Now, repentance is, and I'll ask you to repeat it after me, repentance is godly sorrow and turning away from your sins. What is repentance? Repeat it me. Repentance is what? One more time with a little more oomph. Repentance is what? Right. Godly sorrow and turning away from your sins. I know it is easy for me to stand up here and say that. 
But to practice it is another, what? Story. And I will share a simple formula with you here this morning to assist you in your repentance experience during this uh, Lenten season. Now, the thing is, repentance is what? Godly what? Sorrow and turning away. So you must do two things in order to achieve repentance. You must have godly sorrow. I'm truly sorry for doing this thing. And we need to do what? Turn away from it. And there's a word called addiction. And when we do something so often, it forms tracks in your brain. And when the tracks in your brain become so deep, it develops a habit that we call, uh, I just said the word, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you form a dependency, you become addicted. That's the right word. You become addicted to the thing. So although you have godly sorrow, but you're addicted, you can't do what? Turn away. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't turn away. It, is not, it has become now what? Difficult for you to return, to turn away. That's why we have a word in, 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 the, in, the, in the system called a repeat what? Offender. You do it and you can't help yourself. You do it again and you can't help yourself and you do it what? Again. But we in class, we are in school this morning. But there is a way that I would like to teach you to assist you in turning away. And there's a formula call that goes like this. Acceptance plus confrontation equals what? Change. Acceptance plus confrontation equals what? Change. Say it with me. Acceptance plus confrontation equals? Acceptance plus confrontation equals what? Right. So that is how we are going to turn. Because whenever you meet a drunk man, he could be stumbling, falling down drunk. Right? And he say, hey, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you're drunk. You see who me? I'm not drunk. You know, honey, he will share a few words with you to prove to you that he is not drunk, but he is drunk. All right? So now the first step in turning away is acceptance. You have to accept that you're a smoker. You have to accept that you are an alcoholic. You have to accept that you are what? Wife beater. We, we read that somewhere earlier, right? Unless you first accept that something is wrong with you, you cannot get help, and you will be a repeat offender. You will do that thing, what? Over and over again. So the first thing is that you must accept that there is something wrong with me or I am doing something wrong. That's why when you go to Alcoholics Anonymous, you stand up and say, my name is Michael Greenwich. I am what? An alcoholic. If that alcoholic does not accept that he is or she is an alcoholic, nothing is happening. And it's the same thing with us. We make mistakes have our secret sins and pet sins that people might never know about. Only you and God. And the only way to change that is to first accept that I have a problem. And when we confess that we have a problem, then the next thing is to what? Confront the problem. 
do something about it. Right? I, I talk about, I spoke about smoking before and being addicted and tracks in your brain and all, all that kind of thing. So now you recognize, you know, I have a smoking problem. I am spending more money in cigarettes than I'm paying in rent. All right? Something is wrong. So what you have to do, you go and see your doctor and he give you a prescription for one of these. Doc, you give it me a... A Nicorette? Oh, whatever the right term is. I'm scared to call the wrong thing, you know. <laughs> but a Nicorette patch that help you to lose your dependency for cigarettes and spending more money in cigarettes than buying pampers for your children, and paying your school fees, things that you should be investing your money in instead of cigarettes. Go to Alcoholic Anonymous meeting and take the counseling. Go to a family uh, counselor and bind the family together. And only then there is true change. So if we are to achieve change in anything during this Lenten season, we must first what? Have godly sorrow and turn away from your sins. In order to turn away from your sins, acceptance plus confrontation equals what? Acceptance plus confrontation equals what? Say it brave. Acceptance plus confrontation equals what? Change. So we still have a few more days in length and we can achieve the changes we want to have in our spiritual experience with God. And secondly, Jesus told a parable about a landowner and he planted all these fig trees. But there was just one fig tree. Every year he went it. For three years he went to this tree expecting to get some figs from, these, from this particular tree. And after the third year, he said, you know, I had enough. He told the gardener, come, get a cutlass, cut down this tree, get a fork. After you cut down the tree, even dig up the root. I don't want any of it to even grow back. It is wasting my soil. But then the gardener said, listen, hold up, hold up a minute. Hold up a minute. Let me water it a little more. Let me place a little more around it. Let me prune the leaves and do a few things. Let me, I, I, I want to see how much gardeners, true gardeners we have here. Three inches from the ground, pong a rusty nail in it. <laughs> okay, we have a few because they're smiling. Three inches from the bottom. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Three inches from the ground. You pong a rusty nail, and then you take a cutlass, and you threaten it. If you don't bear, I'll cut you down. And then the tree started to what? Bloom and bear more figs than all the other trees. And I want to say to you, during this COVID-19 crisis, everything looked like it was going wrong. We pray and God wasn't blessing us. We work hard, we're not getting paid. And all of that, like the fig tree, the owner was coming and expecting something. But then the gardener say, let me invest a little what? More. And that is what God expects of you this morning.
to invest a little more in your church. Invest a little more finance into your church. Invest a little more in your husband. Invest a little more in your wife. Invest in your children. Invest a little more in your community and see the abundant blessing that God will give to you. It is not time to give up. It is not time to cut down the tree. It is not time to root up, but it is time to invest a little more in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? We need to invest in our worship. We have now gone back to 100%. I pray as the weeks go by, all come out to church and return to church as normal. Because we are going to great lengths to make sure that we sanitize. See? Right? Every time I do a certain amount of touching, I say, because I have to touch my cards, my things. And after I touch a couple of times, I have to what? Sanitize. Right? So we have gone to great lengths to sanitize and create a safe environment for you to come out and worship in. I know it's all about exposure and stuff, but invest in church. Expose yourself to the Lord and receive a blessing from him. I'm just saying this again. We are working really hard at St. Stephen's, not St. Stephen's and Lacan Church because I'm not ruling out our two other churches, St. St. Gregory's and the Ascension, they too are working hard to make sure all our churches, when we open up on Sundays for you to come in, it's clean, sanitized environment for you to worship in. So don't to come to the Lord and worship him in spirit and in truth. We need to invest in our what? Worship and in our church. We need to invest in our Bible study and studying. Study a little more. Study a little harder. I wish when I was in primary school, I study as much as I study now for the Lord. Because when I'm finished here, I take a rest day Monday, and from Tuesday, I'm studying for next Sunday. And when I was in school, hmm, you could have got me to study like that? Nah, only the Lord. Right? My, my best thing was lunchtime and recess. Get A in those subjects. <laughs> All right, we need to invest in our fellowship. Sometimes we may be staying home and saying, you know what, nobody call me. But what does it hurt for you to take up the phone and call someone? You may brighten a heart, you may brighten a life, you may, may put a, a, a smile on someone's face. when you give them a telephone call and say i was thinking about you let us pray and last but not least we need to invest in the finance of our church we need to do what <laughs> quiet boy we need to invest in the finance of our church. 
one of the teaching, we follow the Ten Commandments. This is not a core teaching, like it's a core teaching in some of our other brothers and sisters' church. One of their core teaching is tithes and offering. When you join the church, you had to join the church, name, name, address, phone number, and paste them. Right? I'm uh, not uh, online and I'm brave because I serve the Lord and I am talking the truth and I'm lying. When you join some churches, I'm saying it a second time so they can get it right. Name, address, phone number, and what? Paste them. So that they know how much tithes and offering they supposed or they should come from you every month because that tithes and offering is a part of their what? Core what? Teaching. And we need to invest a little more. We never ask anyone here for their pay stub to find out how much is 10% and demand 10% uh, return from your salary. All we are asking from you is to invest financially in your church a little more. And when we are faithful taxpayers, the psalmist David said that he has never seen the righteous forsaken, nor its seed, what? Begging bread. I guarantee you if you invest in your church and you become a faithful person who returns a faithful tithes and offering, never go homeless. There will always be a roof over your head. There will always be food in your fridge, clothes in your cupboard, shoes on your feet, clothes on your back. Because he will never, ever, 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 ever forsake you. And I have lived this. When I was in Africa for five years, no salary, no work, no nothing. And just when I'm down to my last city in Trinidad, we call the notes dollars. In Ghana, the notes are called CDs. So you have one CD, five CDs, 10 CDs, 100 CDs, whatever. So the, the dollar thing is called CDs. And whenever I am down to my last city and wondering, Lord, I, I don't know where my next thing will come from. I'm not working, I'm doing, I'm just in school studying. Somebody, somewhere, God will remind them that Father Greenwich is still in seminary. Send him a little 50 bucks, send him a little hundred dollars. And if you see fat boy run, to the post office. The whole school know when I get money because that's the fastest they ever see in Parkwaysi move. That's a way boy, father, my um, Parkwaysi get money. Go on. But I'm saying, God, in those five years, I learned about tithes and offering. And whenever I receive, no, no, this is a serious part now. Whenever I receive that money, I'm not even working, but I am returning what? Tithes and offering. Whenever I receive money during the week, Sunday, tithes and offering being returned to God. And I, I know one or two times in the sermon, I mix up. I'm talking plenty because I don't have a second church to go to. So just, just hold on. Hold on. I, I, I want to say this, and I made the mistake earlier in my sermon. I don't but I want to correct it now. I have to correct it. We don't pay tithes and what? Offering. We return a faithful tithe and offering. We can't pay for the sunshine. 
can't pay God for oxygen. We can't pay God for life. We can't pay God for health. There are so many persons I saw during this COVID thing, even on the news, what's up? They have all this money and their relatives are sick and the $5 million still can't cure them. We can't pay for anything he has given to us, but we can show our gratitude by returning our faithful tithes and offering. So we what? Return our faithful what? Tithes and offering to the thing. We can never, ever pay God. So the next time you hear somebody say, I'm going and pay my tithes and offerings, then I'm still paid, but you're returning a faithful tithes and offerings because there are things that God has given to us that is priceless, we can't pay for. And, and another thing, let me just say this one more thing. It's 10 o'clock and I talk plenty, half an hour. God is so faithful and true to us. Although we make mistakes, eh? he never come and say, you know, I fed up with Robbie, you know. I can't take this thing no more. Let me lock off the oxygen over his house. No sun, no oxygen, no food, no nothing. He not good. Did God ever look at you like that? God looks at us as bones of his bones and flesh of his flesh. We are his creation. He knelt down on his knees and breathed into man the breath of life. He wants everything good for you. And all he asks in return is for us to give a faithful what? Say it with me. Faithful what? Wow. I know it's a mass. I'm taking it as a mass that I can't hear all of it, but it's all right. We must return a faithful what? Tithe and offering. All right, so I'll stop here. So in order, quick recap, repentance is godly sorrow and what? Turning away. In order, acceptance plus confrontation equals what? Change. And once we apply this formula to our lives, we can change anything, right? Change the smoking, change the alcoholism, et cetera, et cetera. And as time goes by in this COVID-19 crisis, we need to what? Invest a little more. As the gardener invested in the fig tree for one more year, let us invest in our church. You don't like how the color of the church? Say, Father, I donate into Galena paint. What? Do what? Invest in your church. Invest in your relationships with your husband, your wives, and your... Oh. Woo. I think it's time to stop to get in time. Invest in your relationship with your husband and your wife. Your children, your community. We need to what? Invest a little more. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus invested his only son for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, shall we all stand as we recommit ourselves to the Lord. Nineteen Creed on page 104. Nineteen Creed.
together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only Son, our eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Page 107, Prayer of Intercession, Form B. In our prayer, my brothers and sisters, let us remember those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Let's remember the challenges we face as a nation, as a church, as a country, and even the challenges being faced in our nations abroad, such as Ukraine and Russia, as we pray for the peace of the world and we pray for healing in our land, healing in our church, healing amongst ourselves. Let us put in spirit of Almighty God upon all who are in need, all who are bereaved, all who are sick, all who are suffering. Let us pray for the church that we would grow in faith. We thank God for his mercies for bringing us here this morning. God is a merciful God. And it's because of God's favor and his mercy that we are here. So we must thank him. Even in a time of COVID, God is merciful to us. So we bless his holy name. So we continue on page 107. Form B, Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops. At this time, we remember our diocesan Bishop Claude Berkeley and all assistant bishops Clive Roll and Calvin. We pray for all priests. Remember this time our own parish priest, Reverend Father Michael Greenidge. And we pray for all deacons, all evangelists, all the ministers, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. At uh, this time, we remember the departing of our faithful servants, Melvin Thomas and Eva Johnson. Give the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your sins who have entered into joy. And at this time, let us pray for our needs and those of others. In our prayer, we remember those who are unable to join us in church at this time. Remember our sick and shut in that the Lord will strengthen them as they continue to serve, as they continue to worship from right where they are, as they continue to trust God. Together, Almighty God, 
to whom our needs are known before we ask. Help us to ask only what accords to your will and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Page one, two, three in our Book of Common Prayer. Page one, two, three. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins to the Almighty God using Form B. Form B. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your need. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet each other with the sign of peace and love. Peace and love. At this time, we will return a faithful offering to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we play our offertory hymn and collect the offering while we prepare for the Eucharist.
Shall we all stand for the Eucharist? Page 126 in our Book of Common Prayer. Page 126. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer, the fruits of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father Almighty, everlasting God, for you bid your faithful people come and cleanse your heart and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacrament, they may come to the fullness of your grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn, say this, say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Mind. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Eucharistic prayer. E, page 142. Eucharistic prayer. E, page 142. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of your new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which is given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Stephen, St. Michael, St. Gregory, and the Ascension, and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ, our Lord with him and through him by the power of the holy spirit we worship you father almighty with all those who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise blessings and honor and glory and power be yours now and forever amen as our savior has taught us so we pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lord, 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. The gift of God for the people of God. At this time, you may now come forward to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as directed by the ushers. Mm -hmm.
Shall we all stand for our post communion prayer? Page one, four, eight. Page one, four, eight. The Lord be with you. Let us, the Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now to the world and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your son jesus christ our lord amen christ gives you grace to grow in holiness to deny yourself take up your cross and follow him and the blessings of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Our doxology. Please be seated. I invite the men to stand at this time and join me as we recite the men's men ministry prayer. Creator God, our Heavenly Father, who calls all his people to witness to the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring others to a knowledge of him, bless the main ministry throughout the Anglican Diocese in all our undertakings and direct our part. Teach us to participate fully as it is only by so doing that we shall respond to God as we ought, express real commitment to him, and inspire others to give of themselves in service to God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We will like all the members of the Thomas family and the Johnson family to stand at this time. Thomas and Johnson. Okay. 
I like everyone to know during this week, Melvin Thomas. He is the brother-in-law of our beloved lay minister Patrick Webb and Eva Thompson, the mother of Nicholas Thompson, have passed away during this week. I am asking them to stand as we say a prayer for them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your faithful servants, Melvin and Eva. And we pray that had heaven opened to them the gates of larger life, you will receive them more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have faithfully served you in the past, they may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, may you continue to comfort the family during their time of difficulty. Send your angels to comfort them, support them, guide them, and save them in your eternal kingdom. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any visitors today? Visitors? Okay. Let us all give them uh, St. Stephen's round of applause and welcome them to St. Stephen's. I pray that our act of worship has drawn you closer to the foot of the cross. You may be dead at this time. Anyone for birthday anniversary? Birthdays anniversary? Birthday? Okay. Sweet 16? <laughs> Okay, we have two birthdays. Okay, another birthday. And I see Mr. Okay. Okay, just excuse me for all three are birthdays. Okay, good. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Heavenly Father, you know this meeting this morning is not by mistake. You have sent your angels to bless three of your children this morning. I ask now that you open the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they have enough room enough to receive them. You have watched over them from the day of their birth up to this time. And you have granted them the privilege to come into your house at St. Stephen's to be blessed on their holy, on their, on this holy day, on their birthdays. Continue to bless them and keep them. May they celebrate many, many more birthdays at the foot of the cross and let your will be done in their This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday, Psalms. we seated at this time we'll have our announcements by our priest warden miss althea ogaro pleasant morning st stephen's welcome 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 at the diocesan level the diocesan caravan continues in the northwest region on the 23rd and the 26th of march the topic renewal. At our regional level, South Region, we have our caravan on the 30th at St. Clement's Parish and on the 1st at St. Paul's. The theme being recommitment and rededication. Of course, it will be communicated 
on our parish chat for us to join via the Zoom platform. Parish level, we have our Bible study and prayer group on Tuesday. We have service on Wednesday. Upcoming parish events, we have the bakery, our Palm Sunday bakery, what I have dubbed the labor of love. Some bake, some buy, some do the boat. I'm appealing to parishioners. This project yield $8,000 last year because of all of us, the labor of love. What did we do? We didn't have much expenses. If you have any coconuts, Mr. Bowen, you have a pumpkin in your yard, whatever you have, you have fig trees, you have fig, whatever, we utilize all those things and we make items. This is where we show up the skills of our parishioners, those who could bake sweet bread, bone, and all these things. And we sell it to raise money for our church. The upcoming events are our harvest. We are having a raffle. You will get your sheets next week. So please come back and bring someone next week. Invite two persons with you so that we could fill the pews again because we're moving out of, not out of, but we on a hundred percent capacity. We just have to be very safe, wear your mask. We have the raffle and we have lunch tickets at $50. So we are appealing to each parishioner to take some lunch tickets and also some raffle sheets. We also have the harvest offering envelopes. Okay? Are we comfortable with that? We're using that as a way to raise funds. We also have hot cross funds on Good Friday. That will be communicated to you all. What we have is the items for the bakery and also the prices. It's on the parish chat. Those of you all who don't want to go to the chat, you have sheets in the back there where you could place your orders for things and hand it to me. It's right there on the, with the table with the white tablecloth and I will take it from there or you could put it on the chat or give me a call. What else do we have? Our outreach to our needy cases, as our rector spoke about this morning. At the back of the church, we have a half of a drum there, which says, please help the needy. It's one way in which we tag on our social responsibility as a parish. Whatever you have, if you go to the ghost train, mountain, macaroni, three packs for $20, the ketchup, keep two for yourself and put one in the box. So eat all the macaroni pie, too much saturated fat, okay? So just bring one item, you buy the bar of soap, three soaps, take out two and put one in the drum so that we could reach out to the needy cases in our parish and also Prince system and environs. Okay, happy birthday to our birthday folks. I would like to get the date of your birthday, the 2nd of March, the 25th of March, not the year, so that as a parish, you could call, we could call you, or we could reach out to you on our parish chat to continue the fellowship during the week and some members could call. Thank you, and do have a pleasant week. Uh, two final announcements at the end of the service. I'd like to see all ushers. And, oh, the boat wardens are not here. I would like to see 
the wardens after the end of service. At the end of the service, I'd like to see both wardens and all the ushers, please. Okay. Uh, St. Clement's Parish has extended a Sunday evening invitation to us for their Bible study at 4.30 p.m. Um, I think it's on Google. It's on the parish chat. You just touch the link, everything opens up, and let's make a joyful noise, you know, in the presence of the Lord. And pertaining to Wednesday services, apart from the 6 a.m., which Father conducts, we also have midday services. Midday Lenten service, all are welcome. Bring a friend, bring a family. And in everything, we give thanks. And last Wednesday, I said, and I was overwhelmed by the love from the parish and the wider community. And I must say thank you for expressing your love. Thank you, thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. I like you to remember that Tuesday Bible class, Wednesday this week, we are having two services, one at 6 a.m. and one at 12 noon for the Lenten season of our regular Wednesday morning prayer at 6 a.m. And then at noon, our Lenten midday prayer on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we have our confirmation classes as usual. All this information you could get on the church uh, site, update site. If there is no anything else, shall we all stand for our recessional hymn? Bless the Lord. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Have a safe day, a safe week, and a spiritual one in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Thank you. With the blessings to one and all.